Singapore has a vision to become the world's first smart nation. By using new technologies to improve healthcare, transport and the environment, the government of Singapore is hoping to transform this city-state into its version of a 21st century utopia. We've come here to meet the people behind the plans and find out how far they've come to realising their ambitions. We really do believe that we have a position that nobody else can replicate. We have huge venture capital in Singapore. We have a number of startups that are growing here. We have a great entrepreneurship spirit and community. We have some of the biggest multinationals in the world consider Singapore their Asia Pacific hub. We also have two top 50 world ranked universities here and we have multi-billions worth of R&D every year. No other country has that same type of ingredient mix. We are well placed to take advantage of the technology and to make a quantum leap forward. Why? I give you three reasons. Firstly, because our ethos in our society is rational, technological, forward-looking. Secondly, we have a population that's IT savvy and who understand technology. Thirdly, this is a highly connected and wired up island. In a display of its tech credentials, Singapore recently played host to a Founders Forum conference attracting tech luminaries from all over the world to help promote its vision of a smart nation. Well, I think the reality is there isn't a smart city anywhere in the world at the moment. It's one of these wonderful terms that everyone's throwing around. So you're, you're free to make up your own definition. My definition is it's about using information to optimise the operations of a whole city. Uh, and that goes through the whole lives of the people within the city. So, you know, their consumption of water, how they get around the place, uh, how you optimise that. So, for example, you shouldn't have a traffic jam in a smart city because it should be possible to optimise that whole process to use things properly. So we've already got smartphones, smartwatches and even smart fridges. How about smart wallpaper? A team at Nanyang University have developed just that. Can you tell us more about this and what it does? Yeah, uh, e essentially, uh, we can print uh, full complex electronic circuits on any substrate, including paper, aluminium, plastic film. So in the case of a wallpaper, we can print elect smart electronics on a wallpaper. For instance, what we are trying to do is to print an array of microphones so that the microphone can pick up specific speakers. So uh, for for an elderly person, the easiest way to interact with a computer is by voice. And the easiest way is to talk naturally. So you talk to the wall, and the wall, we can print loudspeakers, and the loudspeakers, it can talk back to you. So instead of lifting your handphone and trying to call someone, you can just talk to the wall or call for help. A lot of these technologies, like self-driving cars, already exist. It is the regulation surrounding them that acts as the main barrier to implementing them. The fact that Singapore is both a city and a country is its trump card, allowing it to take a holistic national view rather than just a municipal one. Our advantage is that we are compact, we have a single level of government, we can decide efficiently, we can scale up successful experiments and pilots without any delay. Also, we are able to take a long-term view and see through big transformations to the end until they bear fruit for citizens. Singapore's autocratic system of government has occasionally faced criticism for stifling freedom. However, it has also been integral in pushing forward Singapore's remarkable economic growth over the last 50 years. In contrast, other places bidding to be smart cities, such as London, passing the relevant legislation can take much longer. If you imagine London though, just the bureaucratic nightmare of all of the different local authorities, local government, central government, all of that, no matter how good an idea it is, that's the treacle that stops things happening, it gums it all up. The stability of the Singapore government, the ability to look into the future, plan for the future, is one of the hallmarks that's allowed Singapore to continue its rapid ascent over the last 50 years. And so the idea that we can look a year or two or three down the road and plan for the infrastructure, plan for the legislation, 
and plan for how the policies will be in place that would allow this technology to be used in a meaningful way while still respecting privacy and security, that's something that's a great advantage for Singapore. The issues of privacy and security are two of the main challenges faced by the authorities of Singapore, both of which could prevent the integration of new technologies into the lives of Singaporeans if the concerns raised are significant enough. So what is the biggest challenge for the Smart Nation vision? One simple thing, and that's mindset. We have to be prepared that sometimes there are going to be people that are less comfortable with technology or perhaps a bit more concerned about how will this data be used and in what way will I personally be able to protect my uh, anonymity. But mindset, which is let's not be fearful of these things. Let's discuss them. Let's find good answers to them and let's make sure that citizens feel informed and confident. The problems that we're working with are the same problems every country is working with. Density, aging, resource scarcity have nothing to do with Singapore specifically. It's a shared global set of challenges. Due to the evolving nature of technology, there is no end date set for Singapore's smart nation ambitions to be realized. Already 30 billion Singaporean dollars into research and development have been invested over the last decade. Gigabit fiber internet access has been rolled out nationwide and pilots for new technologies like autonomous vehicles are already in the pipeline. We believe that we're on a great path, which is it's real. We're prototyping different solutions for communications networks. We're experimenting with healthcare at home. We're working with autonomous vehicles and public roads. So these are all in the prototyping phase. So we're describing 2015 as our year of prototyping. 2014 was about designing and architecting. To be a smart nation means to continue to evolve. So we think that we're going to be making great progress in the year ahead but at the end of the day, we're gonna to continue to have to evolve for years and years ahead.